All drill fans know Chief Keef, but only the realest fans know that his cousin was also a Chicago legend, and at one time, he wanted to kill the Migos. Let's tap into the career and come up of Fredo Santana. Fredo was born on the 4th of July in 1990. He grew up with two brothers and was raised by his grandmother, great-grandmother, mother, and aunt in Parkway Gardens, aka O Block. His dad was in and out of his life, and Fredo jumped off the porch at an early age. He once shared a pic on Instagram that showed his pops with a pistol in one hand and his infant son in the other. So, Fredo's been around crime and violence since birth. At 12 years old, he started selling drugs and joining the Black Disciples not long after. At that time, there was no O Block yet, and Fredo was from a set called Front Street. Fredo quickly found himself getting in trouble with the law and got locked up for the first time at just 12 years old. He got locked up again at 14 for hitting the teacher and got sent to juvie. He later got out on probation, but decided he was done with school and he wanted to be a rapper. Early on, Fredo was inspired by rappers from New Orleans like Master P and Lil Wayne. But when he got older, he listened to other rappers like 50 Cent and Gucci Mane. He got his first tattoo at 17, which was a face tat, so he was fully committed to either the streets or a rap career. Chief Keef was five years younger than Fredo, but they was blood cousins. Growing up, they formed a close bond and Fredo taught his cousin about the street life while Keef helped him perfect his rap skills. Fredo saw his cousin's talent early on and decided to start managing him. Even though Keef is considered the king of drill now, the cosign from Fredo really allowed him to take over Chicago. Fredo was well respected in the streets and half the reason Keith had the confidence to take the risk he did with his career. He was backed up by one of the most feared savages in Chirac. In 2010, when Keith first started building a buzz in his city, Fredo got locked up again. When he got out after like two years, he saw that Keith and his day one homie Lil Reese was starting to blow up. So he focused more on the music to try to make it out the streets for good. He dropped his first official track, Hitta, which did decent numbers because of his association with Keith and GBE. In March 2012, Chief Keef dropped his first big hit, I Don't Like, which featured the bar from Lil Reese. Fredo win the cut, that's a scary sight, introducing the world to the legend of Fredo Santana. Even though GBE was well known in Chicago at the time, I Don't Like blew the top off for the drill movement and made them all famous on a national level. Fredo dropped his first mixtape, It's a Scary Sight, in 2012, quoting the bar from Reese that made him famous. Chief Keef may have been the star, but Fredo started building his own cult audience who liked his raspy flow and menacing look. He continued to drop tapes over the next few years, including Fredo Krueger, Street Shit, and Ain't No Money Like Trap Money. On top of starting his own rap career, he also created Savage Squad Records and still helped manage his cousin and some of his homies as they started blowing up in the industry. When Kanye remixed I Don't Like in 2013, it gave them an even bigger platform to reach more fans and gain connections in the industry. That same year, Fredo was in the music video for Drake's hit song, Hold On We're Going Home, and he plays the dude who kidnaps Drake's girl. He would also drop his debut studio album, Trappin' Ain't Dead, which featured guest appearances from some of his boys from Chicago, like Keith, G Herbo, and Gino Marley, and also major names in the industry, like Pee Wee Longway and Kendrick Lamar. So Fredo and GBE were linking up with some of the biggest artists in the game and were respected by the street rappers as well as the pop stars. But everyone wasn't with the GBE movement, and in 2013, they got into a public beef with the Migos, and Fredo threatened to kill them. The Migos first broke into the industry in 2013 with the song Versace, not too long after Keith blew up. Even though Keith and Fredo were from Chicago and the Migos were from Atlanta, they was kinda in the same lane with the music. So there was already tension over who was gonna be the number one group of this new wave. The beef started after Keith thought the Migos had dissed him in a song. In December 2013, Keith tweeted, Heard Migos sneak dissing, no talking. Instead of denying it and trying to clear anything up, Offset responded to Keith, tweeting, We'll be in Chirac next week, pull up. Takeoff also jumped in, tweeting, Sneak this who? Pull up. Hashtag, don't tweet, pull up. Keith responded by mocking the Migos and tweeted, LOL, pull up. Hashtag, call me Sosa Santa. Not long after, the Migos dropped the song Jealousy, Chief Keith Diss, where they took shots directly at Keith. They also did a show in California where Keith lived and again told him to pull up while they was there. But Keith was in rehab and wasn't about to leave to go run a fade with the Migos. This lets Offset tweet in, all these rappers know they p***y anyway. Keith then dropped the tracks Mando and Pull Up, which were both Migos disses, referencing their hit song Bando and the line they kept tweeting on Twitter. In March 2014, the Migos was in a crazy shootout while driving down the highway in Miami and many assumed it was tied to the beef with Chief Keith. Then, in May 2014, Migos announced they were shooting a music video with none other than Lil Durk and Keith's own hood, O Block. 
At the time, Dirk and Keith was also beefing after Keith refused to bail Dirk out of jail in 2013. Go peep our video on Glow Gang vs OTF, War and O Block for more info on this beef. So Dirk would tweet, Migos can come to O Block and shoot our video. Migos replied by tweeting, who said we can't? Dirk responds with, a nobody. Dirk's co-sign of the Migos was also approved by Boss Top, another O Block member, who was also beefing with Keith for not bailing him out of jail. Boss Top supposedly ran through Keith's crib and stole a few items, specifically his Johnny Dang chain while Keith was in court. Boss Top doubled down on the disrespect by taking a pic with the Migos while rocking a stolen chain. So, involving Keith's childhood friends, even if they was also beefing at the time, showed it was going further than just music. In November 2014, there was an altercation between the Migos and a rapper from GBE named Capo at a restaurant in Chicago. The Migos posted a video to their IG, clowning Capo in the restaurant with the caption, caught at El Cap GGUOD, slipping last night in the city. It's hard to tell what actually went down, but Capo responded by tweeting, Migos soft as hell. Y'all just had 20 and I was by myself. Link. At this point, Fredo wasn't just about to sit on the sidelines. When it was just sneak disses and music, he gave him a pass. But once they started playing with one of his boys, he had to step in and shut it down. He tweeted to the Migos, I'm in LA. Stop playing with Capo on BD before I get your whole camp killed. Facts. My word is law, so don't test. Then he tweeted, I will do the time for it, with an emoji with sunglasses. He continued tweeting, on BD, this shit go for any rap You will die playing with me, and I will go to jail without a care. I'm the right mother to play with on BD. And whoever riding with them is an enemy, and I hope y'all know what I do to enemies, followed by the devil emoji. So Fredo wasn't just talking to the Migos. He was also getting at dudes from O-Block, like Dirk and Boss Top, who co-signed the disrespect. Even though they beef was with Keith, Fredo had so much respect in the city that once he drew that line, nobody would cross it. About a week later, the Migos got into a huge fight with GBE at a show in DC where Quavo allegedly had his chain snatched. Keith then posted to his Instagram, showing off the stolen chain, proving GBE took it. But instead of revenge, the Migos decided to squash the beef before it got too wild. In December 2014, Keith posted a pic with the Migos after meeting up in LA, showing the beef was over and that it was all just a big misunderstanding. Rumors are that industry OGs like Gucci Mane and Coach and P from QC stepped in and made sure that it wouldn't result in real violence. Chicago was a whole different world, and once Fredo said he was willing to kill and go to jail, they knew it had to end before someone got hurt. That story shows just how influential Fredo was, not just in Chicago, but the overall rap game. When it was all sneak disses and Twitter talk, he let it slide. But once Fredo put his foot down, the Migos and A-Camp started to realize if they don't squash this beef, someone gonna get killed. But all the respect that Fredo had in the streets couldn't save him from his own demons. He was a heavy drug user and was addicted to Xanax and Lean. He said his drug use was a result of trauma from witnessing so much at a young age and losing so many friends to the streets. He said he suffered from PTSD and used the drugs to cope. Fredo was hospitalized in March 2017 after suffering from a seizure. He was diagnosed with epilepsy and continued to suffer from seizures. His friend Gino Marley would find him on the floor bleeding from his mouth later that year and rush him to the hospital. There, he was diagnosed with liver and kidney failure that was tied to his drug use. Fredo said he was tired of abusing drugs and wanted to go to rehab, but unfortunately, he didn't get the help he needed in time. On January 19, 2018, his girlfriend found him on the floor at their crib in LA. By the time the ambulance got there, he was already dead. He suffered a fatal seizure and was suffering from cardiovascular disease in addition to his liver and kidney problems. He was pronounced dead at just 27 years old. Aside from all the work he put in on the streets, it wasn't an op or the police that took him out, it was his own addictions. But Fredo Santana left a legacy that would never be forgotten and he'll live on through his music and those he inspired.